I've clicked onto the Global Tropical RE for December the 9th, 2023, as is always the case in these videos. I thought to expect I'm not alone, and when making decisions ahead of any tropical cyclones, look to the weather office, local emergency management, and local tropical cyclone warning center. So we've got one system to talk about today. We've got tropical cyclone Jasper here in the Coral Sea. Uh, just to orient yourself a little bit, I'll go to the zoomed out water vapor loop. These are the Papua New Guinea Islands. This is New Caledonia, and this is the coastline of Queensland in Australia. So you can see it's in the middle of the Coral Sea right now, uh, not really close to any land areas, but that will change over the coming days. The system is beginning a westward bend uh, towards Australia, and uh, there is growing concern that we may have a significant storm coming that way for early to mid next week. Now, the system had a pretty impressive peak yesterday, had a Category 4 peak on the Australian scale. I think it was just below Category 5 intensity, certainly one of the stronger storms that we've had in the recent years in the Coral Sea. But the system is facing quite strong shear now. You can see the system really is not moving too much, and that is uh, being a detrimental factor for the storm because we have this upper ridge bringing a lot of northerly flow towards the system, and this has been really hitting the system hard over the past 12 to 18 hours. You can see that in the microwave pass that we got earlier today, with the eye being here, and the northern eye wall is completely open. Uh, it has been completely eroded, and I would not be surprised with how long this shear is going to persist. I would not be surprised to see this southern eye wall uh, get busted open as well, and maybe we see the system just completely lose its eye wall and maybe has to rebuild it uh, before it comes westwards towards Australia. Now, the storm is going to track west because we have a deep layer ridge over Australia, so the system is trying to be pulled in two directions right now. There's this bridge here at the 200 millibar level. This is trying to pull the storm towards New Caledonia, and this deep layer ridge is trying to pull towards Australia. So you can see why the system would be moving very slowly right now. A lot of these forces are canceling each other out, so you get a very weak steering flow in general. Uh, but as the system weakens, it is going to feel more of the flow from the deep layer ridge over Australia, and this is going to aid that westward bend towards Queensland. And now the concern comes for landfall and exactly how strong could the system be when it comes ashore. It does seem like a good sign now because we're getting a storm weakening, and it certainly will help us in some ways. But the unfortunate part is that models have trended towards a little bit more of a favorable solution or favorable environment, rather, as the system nears landfall in Queensland. And exactly how far north or south the storm is may be something that uh, dictates exactly how strong the system is when it comes ashore. Now, this is a 200 millibar, or sorry, this is a 500 millibar height anomaly plot from the GFS. You can see here's that deep layer ridge over Australia. And this is, again, trying to pull the system west. And as the system weakens, it will be feeling more of this flow and will be tracking west. And you can see that there on the GFS. You can also see how the system weakens. You can see we have lighter colors of blue showing up here in the exact center from earlier in the run. So the system is weakening from that shear. But you'll notice as the system comes towards Australia, the system starts to deepen a bit. We start to get more deeper blues, and the system does intensify as it does get towards the coastline of Queensland. And this comes as the environment does get a little bit more favorable on final approach. For now, you can see here's the flow from that upper ridge, and it continues to persist over the next couple of days, and the system does continue to weaken from that. But as the system gets closer to Australia, we get a new upper ridge developing over eastern Australia, and this actually develops over the storm, leading to a fairly low shear environment, and you actually see on the model the pressure starts to deepen, and we get intensification here as sea surface temperatures are warm, and a low shear environment would also allow the system to intensify. Uh, so that's some of the concern that we're looking at here from uh, the storm as it comes towards Australia. And the GFS is not alone in this idea. You can see here's a European model 500 millibar plot, and you see a similar track with the system coming west. Now, the European does not intensify it too much, but it does still show the upper ridge developing over the system, which would be a favorable environment and does pose a risk of, in, uh, of, of an intensifying storm. Now, something that may, may be good here. Like I talked about with the eye wall in this microwave pass, if it does lose its entire eye wall, 
that would mean that it would have to completely restart from scratch and it would need to rebuild it entirely. And if the system takes a little bit longer to do that as it approaches Queensland, that could limit exactly how much strengthening we get from the system. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. There's no way of exactly knowing how that will go. But the hope would be that it takes a very long time to build the eye wall to where it doesn't really get too strong. Maybe something similar to the current European model idea. Now, this is the tropical cyclone uh, map from the Bureau of Meteorology. You can see this shows the probabilities of tropical cyclone activity in uh, over the next seven days. And you can see coming into uh, the coastline of Queensland uh, by Tuesday or Wednesday. And I did find their forecast cone. This is their current forecast cone. I'll reload this to see if there's, there's a new one. It uh, doesn't look like it. But you can see Category 4 right now, probably on the lower end of Category 4 right now, maybe Category 3, but weakening as it comes towards the coastline of Queensland. And uh, we may be looking at you know, category two, maybe category three coming in here along the coastline of Queensland. And right now, models seem to be honed in. And I'll go to this map to depict this. We're really honed in right now on this part of the coastline. Uh, so say from about a little bit north of Cooktown down to a little bit south of Townsville uh, is really where models are wanting the system to come in. And you can see that here on the Bureau of Meteorology plot with this general area of uncertainty depicting the most likely track of the storm now once the system does make landfall there does become a little bit more uncertainty on exactly where the system will go we may not be completely done with jasper and you can see that you may have saw it at the beginning when i went to this tab but you can see uh, what i'm talking about here in this to where the uncertainty region grows very significantly and what we're going to really have to watch for is where exactly does the system come in to, on the coastline of Queensland. If it does come a little bit further north, say around Cooktown, we may have to watch for the system coming into the Gulf of Carpentaria. Uh, there is some guidance depicting the system coming into the Gulf of Carpentaria, and I can show you this on the GFS. Uh, what's happening is the deep layer ridge over Australia is expanding or extending a little bit farther west over Australia. It's a bit difficult to see on this map, but it is expanding a little bit west over more central Australia. So this does allow the system to come west into the Gulf of Carpentaria, and there really aren't any big features to pick this up. There is a trough depicted on the models, and if this does get a little bit deeper and come a little bit farther north, that could pick the system up. But on current runs like on the GFS, it doesn't do that. So the system just sits there. And I can show you on the tuna millibar plot that we do get a favorable environment. You can see there is an upper ridge still over the system, and we have some outflow uh, being in a favorable position for the storm. So all this after well after after landfall, usually the system we don't really have any other impacts uh, coming from the system apart from it weakening ashore. There is potential here for it to come back into the Gulf of Carpentaria. And the waters are very warm here. The Gulf of Carpentaria is known for having the potential to have very quick little spin-up storms with just how warm the waters can be. And in a scenario on the GFS where it may get a little bit stuck because of that trough missing it in southern Australia, it could lead to some significant intensification. Now, of course, that's over a week out. Can't say anything for sure, but it is something to keep in mind, and we'll have to just pay attention to exactly where the storm tracks. We'll hope for maybe a track further south. That also means the system may be a little bit weaker when it comes into Queensland, but that also means the system will likely be a little bit further south and may miss the Gulf of Carpentaria and may, in a scenario where the GFS stalls, it may just stall over land, and we really may not get too much intensification uh, from the system there. But a lot to pay attention to, and we have a long way to go before we're done with Tropical Cyclone Jasper. But those ahead of the storm in Queensland, make sure you stay tuned to the Bureau of Meteorology. I'll leave a link to their website in the description at the top, so you can skip ahead right to uh, their uh, forecast chart. And I do want to show, uh, to get the forecast cone, you need to click on this header up here, and you need to click on the forecast track map, and this will take you to this. And you can see on this plot, where cyclone watches and warnings are, but you can also see exactly what the category of the storm is, timing, and the significant wind field here that you see on their map. 
Uh, but stay safe in Australia as the system comes through. I'll have future videos throughout the weekend and into next week as the system does come through. Uh, but that's all for now. Thanks for watching.